Prince Edward Island, Canada's food island, with its amazing bounty, provides an incredible opportunity for islanders to work together for the benefit of our young people. For the past several years, the Home and School Federation has been on a mission to bring healthy, local and affordable food to island students at school. Our role is to provide the glue to bring everyone together and provide a vision for school food in PEI. Last fall, we brought Chef Tony Geraci to visit Island Schools. He showed us what can be done. We have learned from Chef Tony and from our work over the past few years that a universal provincial school food program is not only possible, it's an amazing opportunity for Islanders. All Islanders can be change agents and our young people can lead the way. You guys have the um, reputation of being the food island and well deserved. This is the first time in my career, and I've done this all over the country and I've done this literally all over the world, that this is the very first time that I've come to a place that all of the ingredients for success exist. They're here, you don't have to recreate it, you don't have to build it. It's all here. And I've devoted myself entirely to the opportunity the Green Party has here on PEI because I recognize that we could be a beacon for the rest of the world. We are our own jurisdiction. Yep. We, to a large extent, we can set our own rules and, and, and our own path into the future. Right. Uh, kids are like eating at the stores and it's like not even healthy and it's not giving them their full potential. I think people should eat at school more, like have the healthy meals that we make instead of bringing like Dunkaroos or fruit roll-ups because those things are packed with sugar and they're just not going to help people learn. Hungry kids don't learn, right? Have you guys ever showed up to school, you missed breakfast, maybe you didn't eat that much the night before and you're kind of spending the first couple of periods in class thinking about when do I, when do I get to eat? When do I get to, you know? So it, it's really unfair to your teachers that have spent a great deal of their lives developing their crafts so they can deliver lesson plans to you that are important. And if you're not physically capable of absorbing those lessons, it's a waste of everybody's time. Really sad that a lot of people don't get food. Like a lot of people come to school without lunch or breakfast, they come here, they're hungry, they're run down, they just don't know what to do. They're like, I know in my house, like, we struggle sometimes, because, like, we'll eat out a lot, like, we'll eat, go eat fast food all the time, and, like, I don't want to do that personally, like, I want to eat healthy, and I want to help everybody else in my community and in my school to eat healthy. You guys, I'm sure you're aware, live on the food island and rightfully called the food island because everything about this place is about food. Whether you're growing it, cooking it, serving it, or processing it, it's all about food. How many people in this room, family is connected to food somehow on this island? Just about everybody, right? So. It makes me crazy when I see uh, communities like this not taking advantage of the local bounty, right? Um, it was really inspiring because my dad's a fisherman and he redirects all of his um, fish and lobster and they get shipped to other places since they're using them here. I also really enjoyed his uh, how he talked about keeping like farming communities, buying from farm farmers in the community, keep money in the community, because then that's just going to go to making your community better in the future. Sarah and ask her to come up with what a healthy local school lunch might look like, so we could all sit down at our Samuel New meeting tonight and eat what our kids could be eating. Do a beef shepherd's pie, uh, PI potatoes, all local organic veggies in there. Then there's little cups that have roasted red pepper hummus and other veggies stuck into them. And then we have local roasted pumpkin and organic thyme soup. We have local organic Acadia wheat rolls in ADL butter, local apple crisp with PI organic oats. And the way that we had this costed, it's coming in around $4 a portion. So what you're seeing is very, very attainable. 
And sort of the economics of this, does everybody understand that when you spend a dollar, that one dollar, right? That that dollar will sort of flip five times in your community before it leaves. Yeah, I think his ideas are actually insanely amazing and probably better than anybody else's ideas right now. I would totally support um, any of these initiatives, especially the fact that he's willing to involve students as much as he is and take those ideas from them and, um, and actually get them to help uh, create the future that will be uh, for their children. You guys have an opportunity to make history, global history, by working together to make this happen. Communities around the planet are looking at what you guys are about to do. Uh, I know all of Canada is looking at what you guys are about to do. There's this old Sicilian proverb, right? And you know, I could say it in Italian, but nobody would get it, right? But the, the translation sort of loosely goes like this. The farmer who plants the orchard is often not the farmer who gets to rest under the canopy of the trees, right? That, they, that you are future orchard growers, that you guys are building an orchard for the future, not just for your little brothers and sisters, but hopefully for your children and your grandchildren someday.